Hello lovely, 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 lovely stitches. So I didn't move mine around too much. Um, I just thought, oh, I'm just going to roll with it. I just added a couple of more bits and uh, pinned this down because it wouldn't stick with the glue. So, um, so as we spoke about, I'm going to try and stick with these two threads. This is an Aurifil wool thread and see if it will it will and i think that's the shade eight double zero three yeah oh it's focusing i don't have these in the shop this was a um this was gifted to me by orophil so it was in like a little sample pack so that i um you know, don't I don't uh, stock these, and I don't stock threads in the shop anyway. It's just too. too uh, it's, <laughs> I just haven't got the space. Um, and this is a DMC um, variegated shade fifty three. Don't know whether that's yeah fifty three, and it's a size eight. Pearly. So I'm going to try and stick with these two threads and I know what you might be thinking, oh gosh that's a bit of a contrast, but I'm going with the fact that we've got a sunrise going on and I think the little stitches throughout will be nice. So oops, let's just get started. I'm a left, uh, I'm a righty, so I'm going to come, I'm going to work, um, hang on, I'm going to work this way, I think it'll be easier for me, I'll just put a couple of stop stitches in, I, I'm not, um, going to do too many embroidery stitches, it's not, I'm not going down that route. I'm just going to stick with a couple of stitches that are quite basic, um, but we'll build as we go. So I'm just going to put a couple of back stitches in there. So um, to fasten down, I'm just going to do a running stitch, camphor stitch, borrow stitch, whatever is your bag. And I'm, I am not going to worry about keeping them in line. I'm not going to worry about the size of them. All I will say is I will stop when I get to the edge of where my outline is because I'm going to cut this out. But if you've done a, a different shape, you'll know when you want to stop. When you need to stop or whatever because I don't want to, because I'm cutting this out um, I don't want to be cutting over my, th my stitches because I'm making like a little hanging piece I might put one more stitch in there ooh you've come through oh, oh, I don't mind so I might go on this one with my stitches a little bit bigger and the gap quite small in between I try not to sort of come up because I don't want to give you a wobble on the head with the camera Again, you can keep your distance between your lay, uh, lines closer together, further apart, whichever's your preferred stitch. I don't know if anybody's seen um, an artist 
called Angela Harding. She, her, I love her work, love her work. She's very much in my sort of genre of what I would say it's, it's sort of mythical, spiritual, that kind of earthy, she draws from nature, that kind of thing when she's painting. But she makes little marks around her fabric, uh, sorry, paintings, and they look like little stitches. And I'm sort of in my head thinking, ooh, I might like to do something along, along those lines. I will see, I'm just kind of trying to pop in the stitches and get them, get this fixed down now. I might do, she, she kind of does, especially down here, she kind of does, she might do the wind and swirl it with little tiny marks. I mean, that would, if you were doing that kind of thing, but I'll try and remember to pop a link in. In fact, I'm just going to put myself, um, I was going to say I'll write myself a note, but obviously I've had a clear up. Um, <laughs> and of course, I've not got pen and paper. Right, so Angela Harding, I'll try and link Harding link and I think I'm on day five but I'll check day five so I obviously batch a batch film um, everything so I'm sure you've under you've gathered that by now so yeah she sort of just like swirls in the with the marks to make it look like wind or rain or oh it's proper I love it but yes have a little look at them and you'll see where I'm coming from but it's good to bury your stitches and I know like I say I've got this red going on but it's sort of a oranges and red it fades quite fine quite light it's funny isn't it when you um, you buy a thread or get given threads or you know you come across something in a charity shop we call them charity shops in the UK I think you call them thrift stores or goodwill so you know when you come across I come across pots and pots of um, stuff especially uh, if I I'm off on a mission to France or somewhere like that. I'll buy up all kinds of stuff. And when you come across them and you think, oh, no, I don't think I'll ever use that. That's exactly what I did with this thread. I thought, oh, no, it's wool. I won't like it. It's like a mending thread. It'll disintegrate. I've got all these negatives. And then as soon as I start with the idea of this I knew exactly what I was going to use it what thread I was going to use funny isn't it I always think to myself oh I'm sitting here waffling away talking about nothing stitching it must be quite sort of boring for people but that said I like to sit and watch people stitch too <laughs> so I'm gonna go with a big long stitch but I have been to, I mean I have been told on several occasions that it's nice to sort of have someone on in the background while you're doing your stitches talking because it's it makes you feel like you're not on your own and I do intend on doing some zooms 
where we can all get together and have a I'm going to come across now because my um, pat, not my, my outline finishes there so I'll be able to I won't cut into that when I and I do say this is a representation this is not um, an exact replica I've got the photograph for that, don't need that. Ooh, I might come, I'll go back up I think and just make sure that that's on there, stitched on there. But a simple running stitch is so versatile. But the um, I'm keeping my uh, fabric quite taut, so I can't say it's cancer because they tend to have like they like to when when the um, when you do a cancer stitch, yeah, the when you pull your stitch through. You sort of pull tighter and you make a little a little tiny bit like smocking but not quite it, it's it, they'll, they'll give it a little when you watch them doing it they have this big huge needle and they go up and they load the needle up and load the needle and they'll pull all the way they'll probably do one whole width of fabric and they'll pull and they'll pull quite so it's got the little ridging tiny it's hardly but when you feel it and when there's lots of stitches in oh my goodness me it is so beautiful it, the, t the the feel of cancer is yeah it's uh, and so if you ever have a little go or have a you know if you ever come across something then you're allowed to feel the fabric because obviously when we go to these shows we're not always allowed to feel the fabric, are we? You can feel the little ridges. It's almost like a puckering, but it's not. It, it's hard to explain. But maybe we should do some camphor in a next, in another. What? Let me know what you think. This is probably a bit more like the Japanese Boromono stitch. Or a, um, I can't think now. Well, my brain's gone dead. But hey, doesn't matter. Do you know? I don't know whether to keep going across there or just. No, I'm going to stop. I'm going to try and come down a bit closer. My problem is, I will not know when to stop. I will keep on adding and adding and adding. And that is my sort of, um, it's not my downfall, it's my style, I like. I like to have lots of stitches in of various different designs. If you go, if you um, if you've been on the website, you'll see my workshops that I do for the slow stitch hair and fox and cockerel and the amount of work hours in that sort of can be vary but for me personally I like to put a lot of stitching but other when um, I have workshops people come along and they will only put a few stitches in and they still look beautiful it's all about the 
it's all about your own personal thing and you know if you're a beginner they're beautiful they're ideal as a sampler piece because you can learn all your stitches and it hides it no one's gonna know as they say you, you know it's it's like the modern day sampler um, I'm going to come quite close. I've got a Gertrude hair. <laughs> oh dear. I'm surprised she's not been actually because I'm talking to myself all the time. She loves to come and have a look, have a nosy. So I'm going to work on um, doing this. I'll just keep on going with my stitches I will change some color and I will come back because I'm mindful of the fact that I'm just stitching and waffling It's not. It's the gold. It's the gold threads actually. After the sorry silk. seeing so far please do subscribe and as always if you can give me the thumbs up that would be wonderful too and if you want to be notified when I put a new video out hit the notification bell so I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna do some more stitching but I will come back for the end of this video and um, show you what I've done um, I'm just going to carry on with the straight stitching running stitch I won't be doing any other stitch at this moment I may change colour when I get further down here and we'll see but literally you are just anchoring your fabric down you may have got bigger pieces of your fabric on so you might not need as much stitching but as I say it's always always up to you it's your thing so I shall be back shortly well, I say shortly, <laughs> it may be, for you it'll be shortly, for me it might be several hours with all the things that go on in um, Rachel world as well. Reggie seems to have settled down, I think he's gone to uh, have a lie down on my bed. He's naughty, he's naughty. I've got, uh, see I was saying I'm going and I'm still talking, he's got, I've got a window seat downstairs and he will sit in that all day long just looking out over the this directly out opposite we've got this this view this these fields and that's his uh, little happy place he likes to sit there looking at the world go by watching people go through the kissing gate um seeing his little doggy friends it's quite comical really because people 
um, when they see me in the supermarket or you know on the in the village they'll say oh <laughs> you know when we're walking past we will see Reggie keeping tabs on the world so he's quite a little character So I am going to definitely go now, now I've been talking about nothing again, but I just feel like it's a, um, it's sort of a comfort for me knowing that you're out there and that you are listening in and probably nodding your head or you know that <laughs> yes I'm sat here by myself stitching yes I'm talking to myself well actually I'm not I'm talking to you guys so hopefully you can uh, get the idea of where I'm going along with this um, you saw a bit of fabric come up or thread come up there I'm not bothered about that I like it it's great I'm going to finish this out, just stab myself under there with a needle. I'm going to finish off my this bit of thread and I think I'm going to come in um, and do some down here. So I'll be back shortly and I'll show you what I've how I've finished up with my just my straight stitches. I'll be I'll be back. Hey there. So I'm back with and I'm just left this middle piece to sort of show you that I am coming in with a different colour into the sort of top of this piece, just the odd stitch just to make it a little bit cohesive, not but in reality, in actuality should I say I'll probably be covering these stitches up with something else, but in my head, I want it to be, I want little, like, it's almost like a reflection on a pond, if you like. Um, I did go off for some lunch and I came back and obviously had had a little intruder by who goes by the name of Gertrude and she'd <laughs> she'd scribbled all this up <laughs> she'd done her own design <laughs> I thought mm hmm yep so I had to um, have a little re-jig sometimes why I don't really like to use pins because Gertrude has the tendency to lay on it or sit on it or do whatever she feels like. She's the queen. So, yeah. Just try not to do too many stitches in this sorry silk. Because I don't want it to be too, I want it to stay its, because it's a bit ruffled up and crumpled up. I want it to stay that way. Um, back on. Ouch. <laughs> First time today. One of many. Mm. So when I've got the frayed edge, I am lifting it because I want to keep that. I want to keep that sort of um rough I don't want it push I don't want it pinning down 
or stitching down. Don't be tempted, by the way, to cut all these off. These all add to the um, effect. When I do my workshops, I get ladies who are embroiderers and sort of have had that strict um, sort of thought process of everything's got to be stitched in a nice neat way. Well, then they meet me, who is like the complete opposite. Although, I do say, I, I, in the past, in my past life, I have been known to do that. But it's too restrictive for me. I think that's why I, don't, I can't follow patterns um, very well. If I get an embroidered kit, I don't... I tend to be a little bit, I go off a bit, pe off piece a bit and start doing my own thing on it. <laughs> oh dear. So, yeah. Although I do love a kit. I do love to buy a kit. I do. But I'm not very good at sticking to the rules with them. So, I think that's why I'm better off there are no rules. A friend of mine gave me a, a shirt dress and on the back it says there are no rules. <laughs> I thought it was quite apt. You don't have to put as many stitches in as I'm doing. nature of it, the idea that I'm just in and out. If I was not doing this on a hoop or, or a frame, I'd probably be going, weaving up and down, loading my needle up and pulling through. And you, if you're working, I mean, I've got it on the table clamp, so it's not wiggling about. For you guys, um, let me just move that pin. I feel like I'm just gonna still keep need to pin it down, but I'll just move it over a bit. Yeah, so it's not wobbling about too much for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. And also to keep me in camera shot, because I do have a tendency to wo wobble off, drift off. And you can't see what I'm doing. Just put my thread. Yeah, I forget I'm filming and end up. Um, I've filmed the table. Because <laughs> I've got it on my knee. <laughs> so, yeah, the investment in these little table clumps was a, a must, really. Keeping on going. I'm going to come across into my. If I'm coming down and I know there's going to be quite a bit of fray, I'm looking for my melor and I don't know where that's gone. Had it a moment ago, but hey ho, could be anywhere. So I'll use this as a pointy stick. So you see. I'm going to come up here because I don't want my thread to trap this down. I'll move I'll move things out of the way. Not too worried about that one because I'm going to go with a big stitch. But can you see I've got all these little fibres that I don't really want trapping down. out of the way. I 
earlier on when I was off camera I'd carried on stitching over the line I was that um, mesmerizing my stitches I do I'd forgotten where we I was going again another reason why I'm not very good at following patterns I think that's why I can't, not can't make my own clothes, why I don't make my own clothes is because the pattern is too restrictive. I remember being in needlework class at school and having to sort of follow the pattern, cut out the little tailor's tack. And when I was teaching it, I'd have to sort of relay all this to the kids. <laughs> and all the time I'm thinking, ooh. I don't like this. This is not for me. But I think I'm in a better place now with my own little way. And thank goodness for the sort of the slow stitch revolution, really. Because it makes it, I feel like it makes it more accessible to people. Um, because you haven't got to have an awful lot of equipment. I know I feel like I'm sometimes got lots and lots of fabrics and lots and lots of threads. That's because it's been built up over the years, and I get a lot. Of, uh, people tend to give me things. They've they've done a project and half done it or it's been sat there for 20 years you know and never done it I'm just going to try and tie a knot behind there without seeing so I end up with people's half done projects or if you're a knitter do you, you know do you get past a lot of oh I can't tie a knot do you get past a lot of half done projects <laughs> where someone sort of started a sweater I never finished it, but the pattern's from the 1980s. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. I get a lot of cross stitch given me, and I don't cross stitch, but I, the threads are great, and I use the, the, the cross stitching fabric as well. I chop it up, or what I've done lately with some. I was given lots and lots, bags full, by a lovely chap whose mum had been an avid stitcher and she just can't see to stitch and her hands are all, which is such a shame. So he passed them on to me and said, is there any way you'd like these? And I thought, yes, please. But it was one of the few times where there were so many un brand spanking new projects that had never been even opened. I um, took them along to workshops with me and let people have a rummage and take them home and and we give them, I gave them to another lady for raffle prizes because they were just so beautiful and like I say if they've not been opened they're useful to people aren't they? But yes there's one or two that had been started, which I uh, promptly dissected and used the threads for. Sometimes you get like this, like um, bits of gold work in them and things, which is expensive to buy. So it's for the amount I do, gold work wise, they're perfect. Oh, I'm already stitched there. Oh gosh. Right, I'm going to go up. That's because I'm talking. I just want to make sure. I'm going to give that a bit of a ruffle. You don't need to keep it flat, by the way. As I said before, if you want to put a little pin tuck in, that's entirely up to you. I'll leave that there because I'm... I don't know where my mellow has gone. If you've not got one of my little mellow tools that I use, big tapestry needle, bodkin needle, it's perfect. 
with a flat, uh, with a blunt end, so you're not poking through. Or of course, use your fingers. Which is fine. Oops. I don't think you'll be able to pick it up on camera, but I can hear my son um, snoring. <laughs> He'll kill me if I do. a random sleep pattern and sometimes when I'm filming during the day I have to stop <laughs> because I can hear him snoring no he'll murder me for this no he won't murder me I shouldn't say that word really but he will <laughs> actually probably won't care one bit because he'll never see it <laughs> Oh, I think I've got a note at the back. Let's just have a little pull through. Are you coming? I think I've... Um, it doesn't matter because I'm just... I think it's knotted round some of the other threads. Uh, yeah, so it's all good fun. trying to make it look a bit like the clouds are going that way but whether it's looking like that I don't know I want to go again try and move these frayed edges out of the way and go under Try not to carry your threads too far across the back of your work. If you've got to go from here to here, please finish off. Or, if you're like me, just keep stitching in a different direction. I mean, I am feeling like I'm sort of stitching quite uniformly. But I know I'm looking at it now, I think, no, it's not. I'll stand up and have a look at it and it'll be all over the wonky place but that's fine that's how I like just stop this from bouncing once you see my um, fabric starting to loosen up as I'm getting the stitches on so I'm going to tighten it on the frame if you if you're in a hoop frame you can just pull oops pull it and tighten it up. Obviously this has to be sort of dismantled in a way. I want to put a big stitch in there. Look. And then some little tiny ones. I don't need that anymore, I don't think. want to stitch that down because I feel like that's not got any stitches in it there. Possibly it has but there we go. Lovely. 
Okay, so that is my stitching done. Um, as I say, I'm trying to stick to just the one stitch for now before the next stage. I'm going to go away and tighten up this because it, it should be drum tight, but you it's probably probably not noticeable to you, but it's bouncing around quite a bit. So I will sort that out. <coughs> Excuse me. If you've enjoyed this, as always, give me the thumbs up. And if you're new, I'd love you to subscribe. Um, I do answer any comments as soon as I can if you pop a comment in the box. And if you want to get notified of new videos that I put up, hit that little notification bell, please. And I will see you all in the next video. Happy stitching!